More than 4,000 people have died from the coronavirus in Florida. Nearly 24% of those deaths were in Miami-Dade County. The director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, Dr. Anthony Fauci, told Stanford Medicine yesterday that not shutting down entirely and reopening too quickly are to blame for the recent surge in cases. We did not shut down entirely, and that's the reason why when we went up, we started to come down and then we plateaued at a level that was really quite high, about 20,000 infections a day. Then as we started to reopen, we're seeing the surges that we're seeing today as we speak. In California, your own state, in Arizona, in Texas, in Florida, and in several other uh, states. So you've got to shut down, but then you've got to gradually open. Unfortunately, it did not work very well for us in an attempt to do that. Now, joining us to talk more about the situation in Miami specifically is Francis Suarez. He is the mayor of the city of Miami. And great to have you with us, Mr. Mayor. It's great to be with you. All right. So you just heard Dr. Anthony Fauci talk about this. Uh, but he, do, you know, he doesn't think about the whole entire situation here. That's business has got to remain open. We saw the shutdown before. We saw how devastating it would be. Give us your boots on the ground assessment of the situation in Miami. Does Dr. Fauci have it correct? Well, I think, you know, like you said, uh, there's with this entire pandemic, there's two sides to, to the story, right? We know that for every action that we take in terms of closing down a segment of our economy, a segment of our society, there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that are affected on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, anytime we don't take an action, there's the possibility that people will die. Right. And so that's that is a, a very, very difficult uh, balance uh, that we have to we have to take into account. Right now, we're seeing record high cases. Uh, we're also seeing our hospitalizations being strained. Uh, we're seeing our ICUs being strained, and we're trying to grow capacity in those areas. And so uh, we're at a point where there are not too many more measures that we can take if we don't uh, get a control of the curve of the ascension, where we may have to really consider a lockdown uh, in the next few days. And I know that's not something that you want to do, but talk to us about your mindset and you know, the information you're getting that's going to lead you to that decision. It's not something that we want to do. It's something that we may have to do. Um, you know, the, the, the decisions that what we're looking at is hospitalizations. We're looking at ICU capacity. We're looking at the capacity of our entire medical system to be able to deal with COVID in our community. So that's one of the main things that we're looking at. We're also looking at the death rate, obviously, which thankfully in Miami has remained fairly low. But we're also we've also hit a high in ventilators, which are, uh, you know, a predictor of, of where uh, of how many deaths we're going to have in our community because about 65 percent of the people that get ventilated unfortunately don't make it right and so we're seeing that number eclipse the all-time high so it's inevitable we think that uh deaths are going to start climbing and and so uh if if we don't uh, the remedial measures that we've taken don't have the kind of effects that we think that they have mask in public you know shutting down indoor dining uh, a variety of other measures that we've taken penalizing businesses that are not following the rules uh, you know, uh, giving fines to people who aren't wearing masks. If those don't work and people don't cooperate, uh, then we may be forced to shut down the city again. Yeah, and that's unfortunate, too. We've heard these recommendations before. People don't follow their recommendations, and then, you know, mandates come down from the government, and nobody likes that. You know, one of the interesting things that I personally love about the city of Miami is not only a cultural melting pot, but it's also a political melting pot. Um, a lot of diversity when it comes to p party affiliation. You know, I know you are a, were a registered Republican, but the, this is a non-political office, so you have to appeal to everybody, not just on political party alone. Um, and you have overwhelming support, at least when you got elected, by about 85 percent, if I'm correct. Right, Mayor? Yeah, and, and, and you're right. You know, for me, you know, I, I'm, I'm a registered Republican. I, I got elected in a nonpartisan office by 86 percent. And, uh, and and really, the, the reason why is because, you know, situations like this, crises like this should not be based on partisan politics. Yes, they should be based on uh, the science, based on the medical evidence and based on the impact of the economy and putting it all together and making what we feel is the best decision to protect our residents. Yeah. And that's and so been hard to do, quite frankly, given a lot of the, the misinformation that's been out there. But I wanted to focus specifically on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. You know, he has been a big proponent of returning to normal, getting everyone back to work and getting kids back in school. What letter grade would you give Governor DeSantis so far in his handling of this pandemic? Well, look, I don't, I don't like giving letter grades because I don't want to get a letter grade uh, for, for my performance. I, I think we're all doing the very best that we can. I can tell you the governor has been accessible to me. Um, every time I've called him, he picks up my calls. 
um, every resource that I've asked him for, he's, he's done everything he can to give it to me. He's given us as a locality the ability to do what we need to do, which is why the city of Miami was the last city to open uh, because we're the densest city in, in Florida and we're the one with the most cases. And so we, you know, he has given us the liberty to do that. You know, there's always, uh, a, you know, you can always second guess uh, things that people have done or not done, uh, whether the state opened too early, you know, bars, uh, you know, which, which he later closed. Uh, you know, and, 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 and being very, um, you know, messaging the, the mask in public rule, which I think is something that I would have loved the president to do a little bit better. Uh, and certainly, I think the governor came to Miami yesterday and, and mentioned that we have to follow the local rules, mm -hmm. which require mask in public. Yeah, and that's an important thing, too. And that's something that we've tried to emphasize throughout this crisis is, you know, you can't have the president dictating to local communities what to do from Washington, D.C. on everything. And you can't have the governor of Florida dictating to you, Mr. Mayor, what you need to be doing in the city of Miami when he's all the way in Tallahassee or someplace else. He tries to get around the state as much as he can. But those are the decisions you have to make. And I think the best grade, I guess, you could give any uh, elected official in this type of position when you need him and you say he's there for you, he's accessible. And that's, you know, I think we'll give him an A. I, I, you know, kids aren't back in school. No kids are getting grades. We'll give an A for that because that's the important relationship and the cooperation between the local, state, and federal levels. We haven't seen enough of that. And unfortunately, as you mentioned, politics coming into play. Let's also talk about what's ahead for Jacksonville and the Republican National Convention for August 24th. Given the way things are going in the state, and again, I know it's very uh, local. Things are different in Jacksonville than they are in Miami. But if the convention were in Miami, would you say it's time to cancel it? You know, I don't know if it's time to cancel it as much as, uh, you know, right now, if it were in Miami, remember Miami has probably 10 times more cases in Jacksonville. So that's a huge order of magnitude difference. Um, you know, right now we're in phase one. What that means is you cannot have a large gathering right now in our, in our city. It's not safe. And so I wouldn't recommend it right now. If it were today, it wouldn't be doable. Uh, I don't know where it's going to be when the convention comes. Uh, I don't know how much progress we're going to make. So it's really hard. You know, this is something that has progressed one way or the other on a week to week basis, on a day to day basis. So it's hard to tell. But but Jacksonville is, is in a completely different place than Miami. They're, they're, they're about one tenth of the cases that we have. Yeah, that, that's important to mention the differences there. I mean, even though that, that being said, a number of Republican senators, Chuck Grassley, Lamar Alexander, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, Mitt Romney, with the exception of Chuck Grassley, not the most supportive of President Trump, but those are the senators saying they're not going to go to Florida. And given the fact that Florida relies so heavily on tourist dollars in Miami specifically, you, you know, how do you bring that part of the economy back? Oh, it's really difficult. And I think part of the problem is, you know, the, the press that we're getting right now uh, is it, not positive. So, it, you know, it has a huge macroeconomic impact. I think part of the issue that we're having, frankly, is some people don't care. They're coming here anyways mm -hmm. and they're partying and they're trying to have a good time. And, and that's making it a little difficult for us to enforce. Uh, and it's also, uh, you know, putting out images that are not positive about our city and the way we're trying to control uh, what's going on. But, you know, look, it's we're doing the very best we can down here. Um, we're hopeful that uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be in a much better position and a much better situation. And I think, frankly, part of what happened, and nobody talks about this, is we also closed very quickly. And so we didn't, you, you didn't see some of the things happening in Florida that you saw in New York. You know, you didn't see people dying in the hallways of, of, of hospitals. Uh, so I think New Yorkers, for example, got a tremendous amount of fear uh, and respect for coronavirus, whereas in Miami, because we shut down so early, we didn't see some of that, some of that happen. Uh, I think our residents, when we opened, were not as fearful. And so they went out there and they socialized as if the virus didn't exist. And one of the things this virus has shown is that it is incredibly efficient at spreading. Yeah, yeah, and we have to keep our eyes on that. Mr. Mayor, we wish you the best of luck as you guys try to dig out from underneath this incredible problem, unprecedented problem. We've never seen anything like this before. That's we wish true. you luck, sir. Thank you so much. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel, now in 65 million homes. Get Newsmax TV on all the major cable systems or go to NewsmaxTV.com and click on the Find Newsmax tab to locate us. Remember, Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.